Welcome to this complete Shopify product tutorial. I'm going to go through Shopify products step by step. I'm going to go into the back end. I'm going to go into the admin section of Shopify and actually show you how to load a product, delete a product, archive a product, how to actually list your product on your website, and also how to edit the product on the website or all your products on the website in terms of customizing the way that it looks and feels so that it's just easier to manage the product itself. And also, I'm going to go into inventory. I'm going to cover everything that you need to manage your products inside of Shopify. So I'm going to share my screen here in a second, and let's go through them step by step. There's going to be time steps in the description. So if you want to hop around and go and find things and go and figure things out as you go, feel free to jump around the video. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I've logged into Shopify. This is the back end of a store that I have. It's a dummy store. Basically, I use it for these tutorials. So once I've logged in, I've got all of these menu items on the left here. And if I click products, it's going to display or show all of the products that I have listed on the website. And so you can see a lot of these are from AliExpress. And if I actually click the little view button here, I can go to the front of the website and see what it looks like. Now, all of these options are customizable. The images, the sizes, the colors, all of that. I'm going to take you through Shopify and I'm going to show you exactly how all of this works. Okay, so let me create a new product for you. Add a product. You'll see that little button in the corner. And then it's going to give me a screen where I can go and enter all the details. Pretty straightforward. So let's just say I want to do a red prom dress. And I have something that I do want to create, but as an example. And so I've got the title here. And now I can go and write a description. So let's just say that I'm not actually sure what this product description is going to be. But I want to generate some text. So this is Shopify using ChatGPT on the on the back end. And I'm going to write it in a persuasive tone. So it's kind of salesy. It's going to influence somebody to buy. And so I'm going to say, let's say this is a silk dress perfect for prom in red. And I'm going to also say that this dress is elegant and classy. I don't want to use the word sexy. And perfect for girls who want to make a great first impression on prom night. Okay, and then I'm going to click generate and it's going to give me a bunch of options. So get ready to make a statement on prom night with our red prom dress. So it's using the product title made from luxurious silk. This elegant and classy dress will have you feeling confident and stunning. Perfect for those who want to leave a lasting impression. So this is great. I'm going to click keep and I'm going to format this a little bit. So I'm going to put this on the next line and I'm going to say perfect for those who are wanting to leave a lasting impression. Now this is great because it's talking about making a statement, which is pretty much what all girls want to do on prom night. It's obviously calling out prom night. It's luxurious, elegant, classy. And this is the benefit. Have you feeling confident and stunning, right? Feeling. Feeling is an important word when you're writing a description. It's perfect for those who want to leave a lasting impression. Great. So now we have a description which is going to show up over there. Now to add a photo or a video to this, I'm going to add this photo from my computer. And that's what it's going to look like. Now if I wanted to select this, I can delete this file. If I wanted to, I can add another file. I can add from a URL. Maybe it's already on an existing website or somewhere else. I can add that. Maybe you have a video from Instagram that you want to copy over or from YouTube, maybe you want to copy over, you could do that. Price, let's say I'm going to mark this at $129 and that's what it's going to be on the website, right? I can track the quantity if I wanted to, or I could click that off so that it's, it's not tracking inventory or I can track inventory from multiple locations. Now your locations might be specific to a certain store or maybe your warehouse or whatever the case may be. I'm using Alibaba and things on the back end here. So I can choose that if I want to. If I want to have an SKU, let's say this is RD001, just as a way of keeping stock. If I have a barcode, I could add that in. This is a physical product. And let's say the weight is, I don't know, grams, right? So I can set that so that when it comes to customs and comes to DHL or shipping information, we can do that. Now I have this basic product, it's all filled in, and now I need to give Shopify the sizes. Now, this is where you do that. So under variants, you're gonna add options like size or color. So we already said that the color is red, so I just need to do sizes. So option values, I'm gonna do XS, I'm gonna do S, I'm gonna do M, and maybe I have an L. Great, so I have that, click done, 
And so now we have the size options here and it's created the size options down here and it's given me already rd001 because i've got redress 001 and it's given me skus for each variant because that's important if variant s has sold we need to have a product id or an sku for that specific product and if i wanted to change the prices on sizes i could do that here so this is the address that i have for my store and if i click track inventory i'm going to track quantity at a specific location so let's say i have five but remember we have different sizes right so we'll show you a little bit later in the video how to actually allocate sizes quantity per size and if i wanted to have this product keep selling even though stock is limited or stock sells out i could click this and so it's not going to show out of stock on the front of the website okay so let's take that off and so we've got the weight we have the size we have the prices for each now when it comes to the search engine listing this is important for google because when somebody searches let's say red prom dress you can customize how your listing comes up. You can optimize this based on what you want to show up for Google and you can optimize this for to rank higher in Google, right? So right now I'm just gonna keep it as the page title like this. Or if I wanted to put the shop name, which I think is a good idea, I could do that, owlish.com, because that's the URL of the website. And if I wanted to customize that. Right now, this description, this meta description, which is gonna show up in Google, comes from the description that I just wrote, and that's perfectly fine. Now these meta fields options down here, I could go and create an image in Canva and upload this. This is a customization that I've done on my website in Metafields. This video is a bit advanced for that, but if I wanted to add that, I could do that. And also with the size chart, if I have a size chart that I wanted to add in, I can go ahead and select a size chart that I have in the store already, which I do not have right now. I could also add a size chart over here if I have that image and that's gonna show up in the product listing. Now, right now the status is active, but it's not on the website yet because I haven't saved so let's save this product. It's going to say newly created products start now start with their status set to active. You can always change the product status to draft before saving. So let's save this as active. That's totally fine, which means that this product is going to show up on the website. So it says it's added and I can go ahead and click any of these options to go and figure out, to go and see what it's doing. So let's go view the product on the website. And there you go. It's a red prom dress. Owlish is the vendor, $129. I've got all of these options already. Size small M, excess large, quantity, whatever, and then your description, right? Materials is something that I've used on the theme right so that's just that shipping also is on the theme itself which is customizable and i'll go to show you that in a couple of seconds and the size chart which i haven't added remember it will show up here if i wanted to great so this product is currently here and the thing that i wanted to show you next was in terms of categorizing this product organization in terms of category i think i want to be a little bit more specific than just clothing and if i just do dress i could do dresses Right? So that's going to categorize this in Google and a whole bunch of other places. Product type, I can write dresses. If I have this as a product type, vendor is owlish. Collections. Now collections, I will go into in a second. We could select this if we have a collection set and we wanted to set this up manually. Tags is important because if we're using tags to filter out different types of collections, let's say we wanted to do a tag here that's red and so we wanted to put all the red dresses together, we could do that and so you can see dress and red and let's say maybe i wanted to do a tag for prom so that gives me three different ways that i can categorize this product in the shop let's say i wanted to do all xs i could do a tag for xs and then and then have that set up this is the default product template which is going to show up on the theme i only have one right now so that's perfectly fine so that's saved this product is now available and you'll see here under sales channels because it's active it's now pushed this product into all of the sales channels that i have marked available the sales channels and the markets so we've got the online store which is the website which we went to look at a few seconds ago it's also going to push this product into google and youtube if i have a shop on youtube it's going to push the product into their shop which is the shopify app facebook and instagram shops right if you have a shopify facebook and instagram shop it's going to push the product into their inbox which is also a channel right so remember if you have chat the shopify inbox chat channel on your website and then there's one more let's have a look manage sales channels inbox okay and tiktok you can push your product into TikTok. Now, if I didn't want to list this product on any of these others, but only wanted to list it on the online store, I just select those 
and then hit done and it'll update I hit save and then those changes are saved okay perfect now I wanted to go into inventory and how to manage the inventory there are two ways that you can track inventory on this specific product or inside of Shopify one is to go into the variant so let's say you go into X and you want to go update the quantity over there you can click access and come into this so you'll see the main product here and then the variant so XS is the one that's selected right now I can adjust the price of this variant over here I can do a compared at price if I'm doing a disc Account. I can adjust the SKU. I can change this so that the inventory is managed only in one place, but I'm going to leave it as multiple. And I can change the available or the on-hand options right within each location. So maybe you have multiple stores and let's say you're doing a stock count and you have certain available items. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, let's say three on XS is on hand. That means available is three. None of them have been sold and none of them are unavailable. Unavailable means that somebody has maybe booked or ordered the product or there's an order out there. So now I'm gonna go into small and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say on hand at this location, save. Do the same for M and L on hand. So that means available is three. Great. So those products are now available and I can go ahead and do it that way. The other way to do this is if I go back to the product, the main product page, and I click on this for selected and I can do a click on this three dots and edit quantities. So then I can select the location that I want to edit and I can apply available quantity to all selected variants. And let's say I'm going to do five. So I'm going to hit done and then save. And you'll see right here that the available is five. So I can, I can do that. Now it's saying available across all locations is 20 total, but five of each because five times four is 20. So when you're setting up your product, that's how you can set the available number of units that you have. Let's go into inventory itself. So on the left here under products, you'll see inventory. And again, you can do this very quickly by adjusting the available column or the on hand column to update the quantity that you have. Now, when you update here, it's going to adjust for all locations. So just be careful that if you are selecting this, that it is location specific. But if you wanted to adjust for a specific location, you can see that this location is selected. But if you wanted to select another location, you could just change it and it'll update over there. Great. So that's inventory management and how to do those type of things. Now, let's say you have this XS and you have five available at this location, but you wanted to transfer, let's say three of them to a different location. So I clicked on that transfer, select the origin is Aspire and the destination is, let's say a different location. You can do like, how many do you want to transfer? And then you transfer. So the stock counts are going to change. And let's say, you know, your estimated arrival is two days time or whatever. It's going to update the website. So this is kind of more advanced inventory tracking if you have multiple locations, which is probably not going to be relevant for most of you. But if you needed that information, you could definitely do that. This transfers page also shows all of the transfers that you have already initiated. And those that's going to make it easy for you to see what's going where and what the locations are in terms of stock. Okay, next I'm going to go into collections because I mentioned that there are collections that you can create. So when I create a collection, I click on this create collection in the top. I can name the collection, have a description very similar to the products, and you can create your collections manually or use automated rules. So the automated rules are you can choose based on tags, based on weight, based on product type, whatever the case may be. And let's say I have a product type that contains dresses. So any product that has a product type with dresses is going to show up in this listing. So I'm just going to do a dresses test because I already have a dresses collection and I'm going to save this just for demonstration purposes. You'll see that it's published it. It's going to be available on the website and it's automatically brought in my red prom dress because my product type on the red prom dress, if you remember, has dresses in the product type. Now, if I wanted to use tag, I could go product tag is equal to dresses or dress, which is the tag that I have. And I click save. And again, you won't notice a difference because the tag is already on the product. Right? If I had multiple products, multiple dresses, I could reorder them if they were multiple or I can choose manual and then drag them around and see. So it looks like Shopify has updated the product listing here under dresses because of this tag. And so it's brought in other dresses. Now, of course, all of these are in draft, so they're not going to show on the website. But let's say they were active and I wanted to actually reorder. And if this was set to manual, I could reorder that dress and bring it up to the top. But if I wanted to have it on best selling or alphabetically or based on price or what's new, what's old, I could sort that over there. I'm going to show you this collection just so it's see 
so you can see it. So this is dresses test, which is the name of the collection. And then this is the product that I have in this collection. And you can see in the URL, it says alish.com forward slash collections forward slash dresses test, which is the URL. So I'm going to actually delete this collection because I don't actually need it, right? So how to delete the collection? Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see this delete collection button over here. That collection is gone. So let's go into the dresses collection that I have currently, which is currently set up on best selling using a tag, which is exactly what I showed you earlier. I haven't got any details in here yet. One thing that I also need to show you in terms of products is how to delete a product. So let's say I go ahead and I search for my red prom dress. And I'm just going to search for prom. The dress will come up here. I go into the prom dress and I go down to the bottom and delete this product. I can also archive the product, meaning it's not going to show on the front end of the website, but it'll still be available to me if I wanted to see the product later on. And if I set it to archive, it's going to show that the status is archived which makes it very easy to go search or filter on archive products for stuff that maybe I've put in the back end of the website. Okay, so in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to actually edit the look and feel of your product pages, because obviously when you set up a new product, it's going to show up on the front end of your website, as I showed you before. And what I'm going to do is actually go and customize this product page. So you're going to click on the themes, go into customize. You're going to click on this little menu at the top, go to products, and then you're going to click on default product. Now I am on an old version of the theme. And so this might look a little different for you, but effectively this is going to be the same thing. When I come to this edit page, for the products, I have the ability to change this product. So if I click change on the right hand side, you can see this select product menu item or, or drop down. I can now search prom because I want to see what my red prom dress looks like. And again, because I've got the pricing adjustment thingy and I'm in Thailand, it is showing me the Thai price, which is totally fine. So you can see on the left hand side here, we have the header, which is part of the theme at the top there. We have the product information, which is basically this entire block. Then we have the sub items, which is is all of these little blocks inside of the product page. So I have this text option, which is showing right now the vendor and it's set to uppercase. I have this title, which is from the product title, which is not customizable. You have the price, also not customizable, variant picker, which you can change to a drop down or pulls. Now, again, these design options are specific to my store, but if you wanted to change the look and feel, you could do that. And again, these come from the product and from the variants that we created earlier. Quantity selector can't be edited. Buy buttons, we can show dynamic buy checkout buttons or show recipient information form for gift cards. So that allows people to buy using gift cards. If we wanted to change the order of these different things, we could just drag it around and change that. Now I've got a material section, which is what I showed you earlier when I looked at the product and I've got this text written in. So that's going to show on every single product. And I've got this leather icon. If I wanted to change it to, let's say lipstick, right? I could definitely do that. Now lipstick may not be the right thing to use there. So I'm going to keep it on leather. So, okay. For shop shipping and returns, again, this is a text that I've added in here. I've got the size chart. If I've added an image, it's going to show up here. Complementary products. This is using an advanced feature in Shopify, which is the search and recommendations app. I've got this little share button here, which people can share to Facebook, social accounts, etc. Then you'll see related products down here and I can change the titles and etc. etc. I've got a multi-column goodie over here, which has free shipping on the left side, which you can edit the items on the left there. And then on the right, I can go ahead and edit over there. If I wanted to add more sections, or if I wanted to add maybe some text, or if I wanted to add a banner or some other things to this page, I could go ahead and do that. Just bear in mind that if I add anything to this page, it's going to update every single product on the website because I'm editing the default product page. So thank you so much for watching the tutorial. I hope that was useful as far as managing your products inside of Shopify, setting your stock, creating a product, deleting a product, archiving a product and managing pricing and also customizing it on the front end on your website itself. I hope that was useful. If you like this video and if you like what I'm doing here, hit the subscribe, hit the like, comment below and let me know if there's anything I missed or is there anything else that you need. And if there is, I will definitely think about creating that content for you. I wish you luck in your Shopify journey. And of course, I wish that you sell out all of the products that you have in your shop so that you can grow a sustainable Shopify business. Take care. We'll see you in the next video.